Hi everyone! In this tutorial we will explore how to make in Adobe Illustrator in Vector a glass morphism effect. Frosted glass look that you often see in modern UI designs. Let's get started. We start off creating a background with rectangle tool. I've created some swatches for my background. You can choose any colors you want or create your own swatch palette or use already existing one in a swatch library. Next we create a mesh using mesh tool and adding first anchor points and continue creating a net of anchor points and after changing their colors. We will create a fluid background so you can play with different colors at the moment and you can easily edit it later. So if some, something you don't like uh, at the moment you will be able always to come back and change it. Uh, so play with your imagination, leave it as it is and we will edit it later when all our objects are in place. Our background is ready, now we have to create our panel, use rectangle tool, put it in the center, make the corners a little bit rounder and we have to align it with the center of our artboard, this so, and then the color should be a little bit lighter, I chose this one. Alt Shift we create a copy of it and put it towards the center a little bit like a frame and make opacity to zero. Then we choose both of these objects, use the shortcut key to create a blend and in specified uh, steps we, I make around 50. Then I'm choosing the rectangle which is in the center and put opacity a little bit more up to make it opaque but not completely transparent. Then I need a bigger rectangle, I put it on top, making a copy of it and just having only outlines, making it around 5 pixels. Choose the color a little bit darker and see how it works. It should be a small frame around our panel. First I expand it and after I work with a gradient, making it from lighter to darker. Next I want to add glow effect on the panel, so I copy the blend effect and making the smaller copy of a rectangle and drag it down and make it bigger to, to expand it. Then in transparency we choose um, maybe screen, screen mode and we have to adjust the colors so it will make the glowing effect. Make all the outer and inner rectangles in total black and inside we will adjust this color so I want to make one and another corner glowing, so I have to use the gradient tool to do it. On one side it will be a dark color, black, and on another side it will be lighter color, so only one side of uh, 
this blend will have a glowing effect. I think I will add a little corner in the end also to have a little bit of glow but I will dim it down a little bit so we have only one upper corner which is, which is glowing so much and another one less and I continue adjusting the colors of gradient to make it look better dimming the, col the colors or maybe adjusting the brightness it's totally optional you might also skip this step and don't do any of glowing effect just go to the next steps I want to change this frosted effect and uh, make it more transparent over towards the center so I choose this rectangle around the corners and play with opacity this so then choose these three objects together and group them and basically a uh, panel is ready and background as well we can lock them in the layers panel and after going to the next steps next we're going to create a radial mesh so we go to we make a circle go to gradient uh, radial gradient and then go to object and expand it we choose our mesh and the rest we delete here we go our radial mesh is ready now is the point of creating extra anchor points and uh, choosing the right colors to make our sphere looks uh, realistic and 3D. So I chose the light goes on the upper left corner and on the lower right one going to be darker colors. So now it's the moment of just playing and adjusting our colors on the sphere. With lasso tool it's very useful to choose multiple anchor points and to do not touch those that you don't want. So I use this uh, tool pretty often. Okay, I'm almost happy with the result. So it's ready. Later I will be able to adjust them and I have to you have to bring it down behind the panel so you can see the panel is transparent and uh, now we have to align the spheres around the background I see how it looks better Maybe this way lighter corners they go towards the center this i chose in my composition that they are going to be aligned this way it could be also other shapes you can use uh, any uh, many different ones And with the help of this tool, I chose one of the spheres and changed a little bit the uh, color of it. So we have uh, also dynamic of colors in our spheres and they don't all look the same. Now I make bigger rectangle, same size as the uh, mesh and uh, I 
I choose basically background and uh, spheres together with rectangle and make creepy mask. Now we have separately background and panel. I make a copy of one sphere and uh, adding Gaussian blur effect on it. And I also play uh, with alignment of this blurred sphere, putting a opacity down because I don't want it to be too bright or too contrasty. And make uh, quite a few around them in the background panel. Blur effect. I will also make blur effect on uh, different colors, spheres. So like this will also have some dynamic of colors on a blurred background. Now again you can play with uh, orientation of these spheres and also making them remembering about the dynamics so making bigger shapes smaller and smallest ones and also making the opacity uh, different different opacities so like this you have a sense of depth in your scene now we have to make a blur effect under the panel like this we will have the complete our glass morphism effect so for this you have to make a copy of the background then go to effects and make a blur gaussian blur effect on the whole scene and this blurred image we will put inside uh, with a clipping mask inside panel like this we will achieve our glass morphism effect So first of all we expand it and after we go to, to our panel and choose the big rectangle which we have inside of it, make, make a copy and then we do clipping mask choosing the rectangle and the seam together. So uh, we have our glass morphism effect, uh, it's ready. I can show to you how it works. Basically, if you want to change your panel or do something, you have to choose your panel, but not choose the image inside of it. And after you can move your panel around and you see behind, you still have this blurred effect, which we made. Mm. So if you cannot use image for some reasons, you can use everything the same, just instead of image, you will have to make it vectorized and put it in the clipping mask. Glass morphism effect is ready, here how it looks. I hope you enjoyed this video, it was useful to you and you learned something new. See you in the next one.